Knowing a user's identity allows an app to securely save user data in the cloud and provide the same personalized experience across all of the user's devices. This is a remake of my most popular video, which got over 100,000 views and even promoted in the official documentation of Flutter. We will learn things such as sign in and sign out, automatic authentication, how to clearly separate our authentication logic to be able to reuse it in your future applications. After this, you will have a strong foundation to work upon. If you enjoyed this kind of videos, smash that like and subscribe button and let's dive in. We will start off by adding some dependencies. The first one is Firebase Core and the other one is Firebase Auth. Remember to be up to date and take the latest versions from the documentation. To keep this as updated as possible, I recommend you to follow the official Flutter Firebase website. Here you will find all of the different setup steps for each platform. After you have followed the platform setup steps, you should go to the authentication section and follow those steps. The first thing we are going to do is initialize the Firebase app. This needs to be done before we can use any kind of Firebase service. And of course, before we do that, we have to also initialize widgets Flutter binding. After we have initialized that, we're going to create a authentication wrapper. The reason for this widget is to later return either the home page or login page, depending on if you are authenticated or not. For now, we're just going to leave it with an empty container on the return. Now we can actually start building the authentication class. We will give it a name, something like authentication service. And then we're going to build a constructor. So the reason for this constructor is so that we can pass the actual Firebase of class coming from Firebase SDK. So here we can see the creation of the variable, but we're not going to initialize it. And with the syntax from Dart, we can simply just say this.firebase_auth inside the constructor. Now we're going to define our two methods. Both of these are going to have a return type of future string. This one is going to take two parameters. The first one being the email and the second one being the password. We're pretty much going to do the same with the sign up. It will also be a future of type string. We'll call it sign up instead. And with the parameters, we're going to have the email and password. We're first going to start off with the sign in method. So inside here, we're going to create a try catch statement and we're going to specifically catch the Firebase auth exception. This exception comes directly from Firebase auth, meaning that if we actually catch an exception, we will be able to provide all of the different messages. Now, as the sign in method of Firebase auth is actually a future, we're going to use the await keyword. Then we can simply call Firebase auth and sign in with email and password. And as our method already takes the email and password, we can simply pass that to the sign in with email and password method. If that is successful, we will just return a string, something like signed in. And then inside the catch statement, we can just return the message coming from that exception. Moving on to the sign up method. This one is pretty much going to be identical to the sign in one. Only difference that we're going to do is just call a different method on the Firebase off class. In this case being create user with email and password. Now for the last thing we're going to do inside this class, which is going to be the Firebase auth state changes getter. So depending on if you are signed in or signed out, this is going to return the user or null. This one is very important as we're going to listen to this in the widget tree. And then depending on if we get a user, we're going to return the home page and if not return the authentication page. If you want to learn how you can test this class, you can check out Amateur Coders video. I will link that video down in the description. So make sure to subscribe to him and check out the video. So moving back to the YAML file, we're just going to add providers. We don't have to handle the stream builders. So what we're going to do with provider is that we're simply going to provide both the authentication class, but also the user stream we get from the authentication class. To do this, we can use a multi provider, which makes the syntax more clean with multiple providers. And we're going to start off by just creating a simple provider. This provider will provide the authentication service. And in the create statement, we're going to use create the authentication service and pass the Firebase off. For the second provider, we're going to create a stream provider. With this one, we can actually access the authentication service from within this create statement. So this create actually provides us with context and we can just do context read and then just say that we're going to read the authentication service as the type. 
and here we will get access to our actual getter that we created in our service. So now we actually don't have to handle a stream builder. We can simply use context watch to listen for that user. We do that by specifying the watch type, which is user, and that's the one we created above before. This will yield us the Firebase user. So this Firebase user can be two types. It can be either the Firebase user or it can be null. So if it's Firebase user, we're going to return the homepage or a text in this case. And if we're not signed in, we're going to have a null class. That means that we're not signed in. So to set up authentication in the Firebase console, you navigate to authentication and then the email password and you enable that. After we have done that, we will head over to the user section and add a new user. We can create a user, something like test at gmail.com and then just add a simple password that you can remember so we can test it out. I've gone ahead and created two very simple classes, one home page and one sign in page. The sign in page is a little longer, but that's just because we have some simple text fields and a raised button. So now inside our sign in page, we can call our authentication service using provider. The method we are going to call is use the sign in method. And as you remember before, this requires two arguments. The first one being the email, the second one being the password. To make this as simple as possible, we're just going to use our email controller and provide the text from that. And it's the same with the password using the password controller. If you want to, you can also trim the text, of course. Now inside our authentication wrapper, we can just return our homepage if our Firebase user is not equals null and then return our sign in page if we don't have a user. And here we can see our minimal example actually working. We provide it with our email and we also provide it with our password. Hitting sign in, we will see that we'll navigate to the homepage and we can also see that if we reload the page, we will automatically sign into the homepage. That way the user don't have to sign in every time. So how can we now add a sign out functionality? First off, we navigate to our service. We add a simple method called sign out. And this method will just call sign out on Firebase off. Now inside the homepage, we can just create a new button. The on pressed on this button will just call our sign out method. And that's all we had to do for our sign out functionality. Looking at this now, we can just press the sign out button and we will navigate back to the login page. 